Welcome to MEB. This is episode 19, The Extent of Reaction Method. In the last two episodes, I covered the molecular and atomic methods of solving reactive material balances. In this episode, we'll cover the last of the three possibilities, the extent of reaction method. In the extent of reaction method, the material balances are back to being on molecules again. However, unlike the molecular method, we account for the generation and consumption with this. This is the Greek letter xi, but it's more fun to simply call it squiggle. This is the variable name I'll use for the extent of reaction, which is a concept that links the generation and consumption of species more elegantly than the molecular method. The extent of reaction is defined as the moles of species I out minus the moles of species I in divided by the stoichiometric coefficient of species I, here represented by the Greek letter nu. Note that by convention, the stoichiometric coefficient is negative for reactants and positive for products. There are a few things to note about the extent of reaction. First, it is a dimensionless quantity. Second, it tends to get confused with the fractional conversion, which we'll cover next time. The extent of reaction does not necessarily have to be a number between 0 and 1, and indeed many times it has a value greater than 1. Third, the extent of reaction is the same no matter which species you base the calculation on. This third point is the most important because ultimately this is what allows us to solve the problem in an organized fashion. By rearranging the definition equation, you can solve for moles out and say that they are equal to moles in plus stoichiometric coefficient times the extent of reaction. But here's where the real magic happens. If there are multiple reactions, you can simply add the stoichiometric coefficient times the extent of reaction term for each equation. And this is the general form of our extent of reaction material balances, where the subscript J represents other reactions. One more time, let's look at the brief example where 100 moles per minute hydrogen peroxide enters a reactor and 30 moles per minute hydrogen peroxide exits the reactor. And we want to calculate the moles of water and oxygen out. The extent of reaction degree of freedom analysis is identical to the molecular method, where we add an unknown for each independent reaction. In this case, it's easier to see that the extra unknown is for the extent of reaction, which will appear in the material balances. Let's start with hydrogen peroxide. Remember that all balances have the form out equals in plus stoichiometric coefficient times extent, and that the stoichiometric coefficient is negative for reactants. For H2O2, we have 30 equals 100 minus 2 times the extent of reaction. Solving for the extent of reaction, I obtain that it equals 35. Moving on to water, the exit flow rate is our unknown variable N2H2O. This equals 0 since no water enters, plus 2 times squiggle because the stoichiometric coefficient is positive 2. Plugging in the value for squiggle that we got from before, the exit flow rate of water is 70 moles per minute. Finally, the balance for O2 follows identical logic. N2O2 is the exit flow rate, and there is no oxygen coming in. The stoichiometric coefficient is positive 1. Solving yields 35 moles per minute oxygen going out. Yet again, we can compare the results and see that they are identical to the other two methods. The main drawback of the extent of reaction method is that you either have to memorize the formula for the material balances or keep it handy. I'll share my method for remembering it. If you start with the steady state general balance equation, rearrange it to solve for output. Then imagine that the generation and consumption terms are grouped together. Comparing this to the balance, you can see that it is the same equation. If you imagine that the extent of reaction term represents the net generation or consumption. Additionally, the extent of reaction method is the most challenging of the three methods to understand conceptually, because the extent of reaction is a bit abstract. However, once you understand how to use it, it takes care of pretty much everything for you, and solving the equations is a breeze. The extent of reaction method is good in any situation, provided that you don't mind this memorization and conceptual cloudiness. Episode 19 Learning Objectives Now that this episode is over, you should be able to 1. Explain the conceptual meaning behind the extent of reaction. 2. Derive the general form of the material balances for extent of reaction and use them to solve reactive material balance problems. And three, explain the pros and cons of each of the three reactive material balance methods. That'll conclude this episode. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.